this video, I'll be drawing a grassy field coming up. Hey, what's up YouTube? John here. Uh, thank you for uh, tuning in and watching my, my video and uh, hope everyone's having a uh, great day or evening or middle of the night, whatever time it is when you're watching this video. So, um, Obviously if I got something to offer here, that's great. If you're watching my videos, that's a good sign. So. Um, Please forgive the um, the amateur uh, video recording quality. I'm still a learning curve for me uh, with my lighting settings and uh, camera adjustments. So the lighting is going to change here and there. So yeah, no, I'm not going to shave my arms. So I might get a uh, arm glove so you don't have to see how my hairy arms. So anyways, I'm just doing my usual thing. I'm left-handed, so I'm working from the right to the left. If you're right-handed and you can go from the left to the right so I, I kind of do that just because well obviously when you're left-handed you, you you smear your work right so and also it's better if the, you guys can, can see um, what I'm what I'm doing here right so it's uh, pretty straightforward uh, just you know as soon as you draw that one first blade of grass you just sort of go from there so I'm, if you're wondering what that plant, that other little plant there, that's called, uh, crap. Oh, yeah, Queen Anne Lace. Yeah, those little things there. This one right here. So I just draw a little stem and then some little parts coming down and a little bushy area at the top there. So. <clears throat> I like to go with my heavy detail with my drawings. Just, uh, I, I like the realism and I don't like the. Uh, you know, to, well, it's just me. I, I like to show all the detail and just to, um, show everything. And I, I don't, I'm not a believer in, you know, the, just showing a hint of grass or a hint of, uh, of, you know, texture or whatever, right? Uh, I like to show every little leaf and blade and every little crack and crevice in that piece of wood or, or whatever, right? So, that's my style. I guess it's called uh, hyper hyper realism. I guess. And for the record, I'm just using the um, a Stettler uh, fine point ink pen. Nothing um, fancy or like that. Just your basic ink pen. Uh, I'm I'm drawing on a. Uh, 400 pound uh, watercolor paper. I like doing my ink drawings on watercolor paper. I know some people prefer the uh, the Bristol um, type paper, but I like this. I like the texture of it that it leaves because it has a sort of an off whiteness to it, and uh, I find it, uh, it has a good uh, has a good leaves a good uh, look to the drawing afterwards. I know a lot of people feel that it, it, the drawing ink on watercolor that it bleeds quite a bit. So I do specifically buy the uh, non-bleeding uh, ink pens, and surprisingly, you can buy them at the dollar store for like uh, I think it was like two dollars and fifty cents Canadian for a pack of two. So, which kind of surprised me because like those same ink pens at the fancy art store are like eight bucks which is uh, kind of funny, you know, so and I go through ink pens quite a bit so like um, this ink pen is almost dead after doing this drawing <clears throat> and actually I'm going to be expanding on this drawing in a later video where I'll be drawing um, an entire field vista and then in that field will be uh, an old uh, tractor and I'll have a video about that that as well um, where I went to a place called Scottsdale Farm and um, 
this did a bunch of video shoots and some photos there and because uh, I always like to relate my my artwork to uh, places that I visit whether it be an old abandoned factory or abandoned farmhouse and I like to uh, cross-reference the two videos with one another so um, for example I visited a place called uh, Luther Marsh and I did a video about an abandoned stone house and then uh, in the following video I, I did a video where I, I drew that same stone house and uh, I actually got some interesting comments I actually got a comment back from my uh, a distant relative I guess who lived there which is kind of cool that because uh, one of the questions I had in the video was I was asked, wondering about the uh, family that had once lived in this abandoned place that I drew. So yeah, um, not really saying much about the individual how I draw little things here and there. So I'm just sort of you use your own best judgment. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. I just draw the blades of grass, I mean, the, the stems of the plants, and I just draw the leaves out from there. So, um, when you do your when you do your leaves, don't put too much thought into it because you want it to be natural, not look too technical or artificial. So, um, that one plant there, that one leaf there, that one branch there, with the, the leaves coming off of it there where it, where it bends down I I didn't really think about that I, I just I just drew it right so that way it looks more natural as well with the um, Queen Anne's lace um, that I drew in the uh, drawings here there's a lot of that stuff Queen Anne lace where I live apparently it's actually um, a very useful plant I think it's called a, a classified as a weed I believe but um, maybe you can google it I'm not going to say much about it because I'm not a doctor, I'm not a natural path, so it wouldn't be appropriate for me to start rambling stuff off about or it does this or that. If I'm right or wrong, um, maybe just Google it, look around, act, like look for an actual video about it, like by an actual doctor, not just some somebody's self-appointed expert at everything type opinions. There's 99% of the internet is just basically self-entitled expert at everything opinions so yeah, you gotta be very careful about where you uh, get your advice <clears throat> especially with uh, automotive and, and building renovation so so yeah here I'm gonna draw some little viney plants so I, I kind of penciled it all in first just so I can know the layout and then I go back and I draw the vines in and after that I go back and I draw the stems so that way I, I kind of know where it, it where the vines overlap and, and go underneath the uh, plants. So it just looks a little more natural and I'm not crisscrossing the wrong places. So you notice like about most of my blades of grass, the, the, the tall ones, the individual ones, I have little uh, uh, seed stalks at the end, which is actually normal when a, when a blade of grass um, we don't see that much, we usually mow our lawns, right? So, but if you let grass grow, after about a foot or two, it, it, it grows, it, it changes, and almost begins to look like a different type of plant. Almost like wheat, almost, I guess, eh? I, I guess wheat, is, 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 is wheat an actual grass? Or, or is, it, is it something else? I, I'm not too sure. So another thing is wheat, uh, rice, although is that like that's like a grass. Rice is like a grass, isn't it? When you're just eating the seed. Um, oh no, actual grass, the tall grass. If, if you pull it out of the base, there's a little white part in the stem when it's when it's flexible. You can actually eat that. Uh, I don't know how healthy it is for you, but you can eat small amounts of it actually. I, does have an interesting flavor, just like those uh, um, the cattail cattails in swamps. In the early years, you can uh, eat the uh, in the early growing season. You can eat the, uh, the stems, but uh, later on in the season, 
after September and October, it, it gets a little bit woody and becomes bitter, so. Mm. There's actually a surprising amount of different plants you can actually eat um, that are right around us that uh, so many of us aren't even aware of, but uh, it would be handy to know uh, what plants are uh, edible or not, you know. It's, you never know. It's always good to know how to live off the land. Um, you can tell that to people who lived during the Depression era or people in third world countries, uh, how useful it is to, you know, what, know what are the edible plants and, and uh, living off the land and all that. So, you know, the way things are going right now, it's, it would be uh, prudent to uh, gather a few uh, books on the subject and uh, um, <clears throat> do a little research on uh, wild, wild edibles. Um, mushrooms, you gotta be careful mushrooms because uh, especially around here in Ontario, uh, Canada, half the mushrooms are edible and then the other half will kill you at the drop of a hat, are totally poisonous. And sometimes the poisonous ones and the edible ones look very the same and uh, will have subtle differences. And uh, so you yeah, should just avoid mushrooms altogether, really. Yeah. I don't like mushrooms anyways. You know, just eating, thought of eating a plant that grows on dead stuff, I don't know. I don't like the way they taste anyways. The texture, I don't like. Um, but uh, there are wild raspberries everywhere, and it seems a lot of wild grapes now. I don't know if they're naturally wild or just uh, the product of uh, maybe an old farmer was in the area and uh, that farm is no longer operating but the, obviously the grapes are still going to grow and uh, you'll have uh, raspberries everywhere. That's the other plant. Uh, um, is it the, the three leaf plants? Yeah, is it? If it comes in three, leave it be. I think the three leaf plants are the uh, poisonous ones, uh, you know, poison ivy. Uh, oily plants that look oily, stay away from those. But then uh, four leaf plants, I believe, are the edible ones. But don't quote me on that. So do your own research. And, uh, oh, you know, the five leaf plants are the ones that, uh, you know, that's another subject. In the later video uh, that expands on this one here, I will be uh, doing more of those viney plants there that uh, are, I'm going to have them uh, more involved with the, uh, the tractor that I'm going to put in the drawing. So that little curve there I did, actually that's, um, I won't get too much detail about that, but that's kind of relating to a future drawing that's going to be incorporate into this drawing here. So. It took me about seven and seven and a half hours to do this. I don't do my drawings all at once. I'm just do like maybe an hour or two here and there or sometimes only a half hour depending on how much where, where what time of day it is or um, Saturdays and Sundays I'll do more uh, artwork, sometimes Wednesdays. Um, I try not to do too much of my, my architectural uh, design work on Sunday, just I, I need the break. I did last Sunday though because um, one of my clients had a project that uh, needed to be done by Tuesday so I you know, broke my own rule, and, which I've done many times and I did some Sunday work on Sunday so um, but anyways yeah you gotta have a day of rest you know at some point otherwise you burn yourself out
hope you don't mind the music. I'll just I try to relate the music to my my whenever I'm drawing. So um, if you have a better selection of music, uh, uh, let me know in the comment section below. And uh, I usually get my music from Epidemic. Uh, it's an epidemic sound, yeah. So I have a membership with them. Um, I can't just download the music and throw it on otherwise. And maybe I'll have some Metallica, but obviously I'll be uh, um, <clears throat> I'll get a, co co a copyright strike against me if I did that. So um, again, so I just go to Epidemic Sound for my music uh, with my paid membership that I have with them. Sorry for the blurring of the camera. I have something more out of focus there. So. Again, my video editing is still a work in progress. Button, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment down in the comment section below. Thanks very much. God bless.